Jesus the King. Come bow before the true Prince of Peace. Let heaven and earth come together. Praise to the Lord Most High. Oh, glory to Jesus Christ. With all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our souls, and all our strength. everybody <laughs> welcome home i'm gonna say that to myself too welcome home i've just been to see family but i'm really glad to be back with you guys our church family if it's your first time or your hundredth time we're really glad you're here my name's faye i want to welcome you to lighthouse and i want to tell you about a couple of ways that you can connect in the first way is to come and join us on a sunday morning in the building at crow's nest or you can stream online we're always live 10 o'clock on youtube now, if you are here in the building, can I just get you to look around? If there's a seat in front of you that's empty, can I encourage you to move forward? <laughs> we don't want to be shouting. We want to make space for new people to come in. So we just want to bring ourselves forward, make lots of room. 
Now, if you would like to find out how you can connect in at church, you can scan that QR code. It will take you to our website. It's got all the information about all our meetings. But a couple of meetings that I want to highlight are Tuesday evening connect groups. You can come along to those. They start at 7 p.m. We've got groups that meet everywhere in Sydney. Some are in the building, some are in the West. You can come and chat to me or any of the leaders and we will help you find a group that will work for you. I also want to highlight Encounter Nights because the next one is coming up this coming Friday on the 12th from 7 p.m. It's a beautiful prayer and worship meeting. If you know anyone who needs an encounter with God, they need a touch from the Lord, bring them along Friday night, 7 p.m. Um, all right, I also want to tell you about missions because we've got a team here that's heading into Cambodia and Thailand very soon in just under two weeks' time. They're going to be... Um, visiting our mission partners in Thailand and Cambodia. So if you would like to give towards this mission, here are the details. I think Pete's going to get them up. Thank you very much. That's our missions account. So if you feel led, these guys are doing an incredible work over there. They're planting churches. They are building literal, literal buildings for the church to meet. Um, we've had churches that have been meeting in homes and then also out in the weather. So it's a really awesome thing that God is doing there. If you want to partner, this is how you can do it. I um, also want to encourage you that if you call Lighthouse home, this is how you can give your tithes and offering into this house. If you want to do it old school like I sometimes do, you pop your offerings in the basket up the front. That works too. Um, I also want to tell you about something that's happening next Saturday, which is Men's Breakfast. Um, so every month our men meet for breakfast. This month it's going to be next Saturday, 8 a.m. onwards. If you are keen to come, please come and chat to Rocco. Rocco, can you give us a wave? Come and chat to Rocco. He'll make sure there's breakfast for you. Okay. Um, now today after the service, we're also having discipleship training. So this is a bi-monthly training that we put on to equip the body in practical ways of living in the Holy Spirit. So today's session, we're going to talk about how to have strong relationships. So stick around after service, have some morning tea, and then come in from one to two. We're going to be having a practical session on how to have strong relationships. All right, um, that's all from me from now. I'll yeah. see you after. Um, just before we start, I was praying for the service throughout the week, um, and God showed me this vision of a thick cloud over Lighthouse here, and there was lightning strikes coming out of it, touching people, and like setting them ablaze for Jesus. So if you're feeling like you're dry or you need a fresh encounter from the Holy Spirit, today's the day. If you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and worship Him, He'll meet you where you're at. All righty.
God, you are higher. Come on, do we mean it? Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, so awesome, so awesome. Our God, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Woo! We give you all the praise. Give you all the glory, all the honor, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. And if our God is for us. If our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is for us, then who could end against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Yeah. Woo. Yeah. What could stand against? What could stand Greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your unfailing love. Hallelujah. You're a mighty God, worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on. And if our God is for us. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against?
formed against us shall prosper. The gates of hell shall not prevail. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. We are overcomers in Christ Jesus. We are the head and not the tail. We're above only, not beneath. We are kings and priests unto God. Kings and priests unto God. We are accepted in the beloved. We are accepted in the beloved. Jesus died and rose again to give us victory. Jesus died and rose again so that we could have eternal life. Jesus died and rose again so that we could be free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, thank Him from your heart. Come on. 
Lord, thank Him for what He's done. Thank Him for saving us. Thank Him for His amazing love. Thank Him for His grace. Hallelujah. Thank Him. Thank Him for what He's done. He has provided. He is Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He has set us free. Hallelujah. He protects us. He keeps us safe. He watches over us. His angels are around and about us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. You are guarding our hearts and guarding our minds. You are protecting us. You are our Redeemer King, our Redeemer King. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You have come that we may have life and have life abundantly and to the full, overflowing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We can't thank you enough. receive your praise Lord come receive the honour that's due to your name come be glorified in your people Lord come be glorified in the midst of the congregation of your people Lord in the assembly of the saints Lord amongst your bride Lord come be glorified Lord, the Spirit and the Bride say, come. The Spirit and the Bride say, come, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We exalt you, Father. We thank you that you are here, Holy Spirit, revealing the Father and the Son to us. <laughs> thank you that you're here, Holy Spirit to lead us to worship in spirit and in truth. Not just to sing dead songs to a dead God somewhere on the planet, but to offer our lives as a living sacrifice to the resurrected, glorified King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we say, holy, holy, holy is your name this morning, Lord. We say great and greatly to be praised are you, Lord. One generation will declare your praise to another, Lord. Thank you that you will be praised. You will be praised in Crow's Nest. You will be praised in Sydney, Lord. You will be glorified in the great south land of the Holy Spirit, Lord. We lift up your name over Australia, Lord. We lift up every soul right now, Lord. Every man, woman, teenager and child, Lord. Father, we pray, come and lead every person to your glory, lead them to your presence, lead them to repentance, Lord. Let them see through revelation the finished work of Jesus on the cross for them. Father, I pray there'll be a great move of your spirit, birthing revival fires as we heard, birthing churches and ministries and missions. 
into the cities and regional communities across our land, Lord. Thank you that this is our time, Lord. This is your time for your church to arise and awaken your glory, Lord God, that we can be commissioned and appointed as ambassadors of the highest government of the universe, the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I feel like we've stepped into a commissioning this morning. I don't know how else to describe it. The Lord's looking to commission us afresh into the harvest. He's looking for willing hearts and obedient hearts to say yes to Him. Say no to self. Say no to comfort and convenience. No to having to work it all out, but saying yes to Him. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. <laughs> Here I am, Lord. Send me. Amen. Can I just step into something prophetic this morning? If we can just have a little bit of silence, that'd be awesome. God's got you here on this planet not just to occupy a seat on a church on Sunday morning. And I hope you hear this with all sincerity. You're here. As we heard this morning, you're still here because God's got a plan for your life and He wants to use you to impact people, lost, dying, broken people in your life. Some of these people will never come into a church. But how many of you know that we are the church of the living God? I'm not looking for people just to have an emotional response this morning. I just feel there's a moment in the Spirit's presence where we just say yes to Him. Say yes to the call of God on our lives. Yes on being a light, salt and light in your communities. Yes to living for Him. Yes to being all in for Him and His kingdom. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom. Not your life, not your career, not your finances, not your retirement plan. Seek first the kingdom. Jesus also said, where your treasure is, your heart will be there also. I feel like some of us are laying up treasure just for this earthly realm. And God's saying, I want you to lay up treasures in the heavenly realm. <laughs> where the true treasures are. So I don't know how else to administrate this, but where you're seated, between you and the Lord, say, Lord, I say yes afresh to you this morning. to you, Jesus. Yes to your leading, Holy Spirit. <laughs> yes to your words over our lives. Okay, let's not, not be distracted this morning. Holy Spirit touches people, they, they react different. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Don't be distracted. <laughs> yes, Jesus. 
Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. For your glory, Jesus. For your kingdom, Jesus. For your righteousness, Jesus. For the people you love, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we pray for our community, Lord. We are here for them. Yes, we're here for you, but we're also here for them, Lord. We lift up those within a five-kilometer radius of this building, Lord. Father, we want to ask you for their salvation, Lord. We cry out for you to be revealed in their hearts, Lord. Holy Spirit, that you'll convict of sin, convict of righteousness, you convict of the judgment to come, Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray for an increase of the gospel that's been sown through the church, being in this area for the past 100, 150 years, Lord. We thank you for an increase of righteousness, an increase of harvest of salvation, Lord. Father, we pray you draw people into your kingdom from the north, south, east, and west of our community, Lord. Salvation is found under no other name except your name, Jesus. Father, we pray for the church in Crow's Nest. We lift up the church, no matter what denomination, no matter what banner we are, Lord. We are one body, one spirit in you, Lord God. And Father, we pray that the gospel rings forth from your church, your people, not the buildings, your church in this area, Lord. The men, women, and teenagers and children in this area, Lord God. That we will be gospel ambassadors, Lord, everywhere we go, Lord. Loving, praying, releasing your presence, healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead, Lord. Revealing your goodness everywhere we go, Lord God. We thank you that it's our time to arise and shine for our light has come upon us, Lord. And we thank you for what you're doing in this area, in the church in this area, in the people in this area, Lord. And we give you all the glory, all the praise, all the blessing in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. 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 Please be seated. Let's thank the team this morning. Well done. Amazing. Amazing, 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 amazing. <laughs> I feel the Lord's taking us deeper so we can go further, amen? He's taking us deeper in His love and His presence and His glory so that we can go further in Him, that we can reach places we never dreamed of reaching, reaching families and businesses and communities that there's no way we could have reached without the, the presence and the glory of the Lord coming upon us. Can you say amen? Now, the early church went to the ends of the earth. And they had no internet, no Facebook, no Instagram, no YouTube page, no website. They had nothing, yet they had the most important thing, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, the name of Jesus at their disposal, they recognized the authority of the name of Jesus, and they took that message to a lost and broken world that was actually so anti the church, so anti Christ, that just the name, the preaching the name of Jesus could get you executed. Yet they took that name with boldness into the ends of the earth and they changed the known world. And can I ask us, in all our comfort creatures in Sydney, living in Sydney, I love Sydney, but sometimes we can get distracted to think our life's all about our comfort creatures. And we have some encounters with the Holy Spirit and 
Preachers every now and then pop their head up and they preach with boldness and confidence and they call out you know, convenience and compromise over your life and it makes us feel uncomfortable. But let me tell you, my job isn't to make you feel comfortable. There's many groups and God bless all the groups and all the foundations and all the things that make us feel very comfortable. My job isn't to make you hate me either, so an amen every now and then is be good. But I have a commission from the Lord. I have been sent here. We have been sent here. Not to do what we want to do, but to do what the Lord wants to do. And the Lord wants to build His church. And the Lord wants you to be all in. That's the message this morning. If you walk away with nothing else, you can't serve Jesus half in the world, half in the church. You can't be lukewarm and serve Jesus. It's just not going to work. <laughs> We have to be all in. And it's not a have to or a have to or else. It's a have to because woe is me if I'm not all in. <laughs> in other words, oh, life is short. None of us have a guarantee we're going to wake up tomorrow. Do tomorrow. you know that? None of us. And if today was your last day on the earth, would it count for the kingdom? If you knew you had six months left, how would you live? <sighs> You'd live very different if you knew you had six months. Well, guess what? We don't know how long we got. I want to encourage us. Those things that distract us, those circumstances, our own hearts, our own... Let's lay it aside. Time is short. Time is short. We've got to be all in, relationally all in. Now, church will only work if you connect with one another fully. If we're just connecting on a Sunday, church will never work. You'll never find fulfillment in church. Because church is meant to be a community of covenant, like-minded people who love Jesus and are committed to each other. And unfortunately, you can't have it 20 minutes on a Sunday. <laughs> this has to, yeah, to each other, but also for him. Can encourage us. We're all in. Your careers, all in. Your gifts, your talents. Your fun Can I speak about finances this morning? All in. Actually, Jesus taught it in a way that finances is proof whether you're all in. Because <laughs> every week you're tested. Do I love Jesus this week? The proof is I depart with some of my heart and cash, yeah? Not depart isn't forever. I'm laying up treasures for the kingdom, amen? I'm laying her aside. <laughs> and we get uncomfortable sometimes talking about finances. I'm totally comfortable because God doesn't need your money or want your money. God wants your heart. <laughs> and something happens when you give God all your heart Everything else in your life follows, amen? You can't be all in with God and still serve Him half-heartedly in areas of your life because it follows what your heart. Anyway, are we good? Do we love Jesus? Do we love being on mission with Jesus in 2024? How many on mission for Jesus in 2024? Living on mission. Some of you are not sure if you're living on mission? Let me encourage you, whether you know it or not, you're living on mission, yeah? We're all missionaries. We're all living for the glory of Jesus, hopefully. And we're here to put our lives into its proper perspective and give Him all the glory. We're good. Wonderful. Where's Paul Pantano? Paul, can you come and share a testimony? From Monique, which is Laurie's mum. So great, that's uh, Paul's sister in law, which is Age's sister. There we go, tag team this morning, come. So, um, this is my sister in law, Laurie, and um, Laurie's mum. 
my mother-in-law, the wife of my, the mum of my beautiful wife, was diagnosed um, with cancer two years, two years ago, and the uh, the diagnosis was pretty dire. Um, we kept hearing the words um, terminal. Um, we can't do any. There's nothing more we can do for you. She pretty much uh, stopped working um, and was preparing for the worst. We got told, I think it was three months, five years at first, five years at first but then it, well, there was another scan that was even worse than that, and I think two months at worst yeah. and six months at best, I think it was. It was pretty bad. <laughs> she was pretty much a, a dead lady walking. Um, and that's when... The prayer went out to our family here. Uh, we started fasting. We started praying. People in this church were fasting and praying for her. She came to a miracle night, probably over, definitely over a year ago now. And my mother-in-law had, hadn't been to church for a while. And, and I say that because when she got touched that night, she fell down <laughs> because the power of God came upon her. Now, some people, when they're churched, it can be the case. I'm not saying this is the case in all circumstances, but they can be super sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and that can happen, okay? I'm not discounting when that does happen. All I'm saying is that she was pretty much unchurched in terms of she hadn't been to church for a while, and she got touched powerfully, and she pretty much fell down, and she, this was her word. She said that, she goes, after Miracle Night, I, I felt something move in me, so something shifted within her, and the cancer had been shrinking and disappearing immediately after that. So she, went, she gets scans every, every, every quarter, she gets scans, and every scan after Miracle Night, the worst that the scans have said is the cancer is the same size, or it has not, or, so basically that's the worst, that it, that it is the same size. The best we've gotten so far is that they can't find the cancer in parts of her body because the, the cancer pretty much had started to spread throughout her whole body, bones, like liver, pretty much everywhere. And at the moment, the last scan that she got is they can't find cancer in parts of the body where the cancer was. Um, the cancer at one point was at 60 mils. It's gone to five mils. The cancer in the bones are turning into scabs like when you cut yourself. Um, it is worth mentioning as well that she, she is on a trial, but this healing process started happening before she even began the trial. So the skeptic might say, well, no, it's the drugs, but I'm telling you, the night that she got touched powerfully by God is when the healing started. Do you want to share something? Contrary to my sister, you will never see me in front of a microphone. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, it can be really tricky to be surrounded by negative thoughts, um, people that don't believe the same things and all of that. And that's, um, I'm also a crier, by the way. I might cry, I will cry. <laughs> um, that was a massive shift we saw as well with mum, that, um, you know, after Miracle Night, it was just a massive shift in her perspective that, no, it is going to go. I, I am going to survive this, you know. It's going to be okay. At first, it was very hard, and there was so much negativity that, like, oh, you know, you need to be realistic, and, you know, sh she's not going to make it. We've not got a lot of time planning a funeral. Like, she literally went and planned her funeral. Like, you know, just that kind of thing to then shift and be like, no, you know what? I'm not going back to, to pay the funeral people. Like, it's going to go. I am going to survive this. So I think... Like, that was a massive lesson for all of us that, you know, just ignore all of that negative, you know, that fluff around you and just focus on what you believe and focus on God because, yes, he is good. <laughs> so she, she just sent me a text because I asked her if it was okay that we shared. And I think it's, it'll be remiss of me for me not to mention this. She goes, I am one of the good ones with no side effects. So there's about 200 people on this trial. My hair is growing back. My anxiety is gone. I feel great. I can run and play with and pick up my grandchildren. 
This is my kids. That's why I'm crying. Anyway, I feel that Jesus has set me free from all bad in my body and replaced it with goodness. But, you know, they say that, I don't know if I'm saying this correctly, but that saying that it takes a village to raise a child or something like that. I think it takes a church to support each other and get around each other because we're family. And when we're going through the hardest of times, it's you guys that lift us up and lift each other up. So thank you from the bottom. And it's not over. We're still, she's going to get up here. This is my, my prayer is that she's going to get up here on this stage and tell you guys my cancer is gone. And it's going to be a testimony for people that are going through it that the power of God is real. So thank you guys for praying. Yeah, praise God. Praise Jesus, the name that's above every name. Amen. Thank you. Wow. Laurie, it's not your last time sharing on the mic, just to encourage you. There's more coming. How good is God, amen? And, uh, yeah, sometimes you're just lost for words, yeah? Because God's not into just, you know, tickling our ears and making us feel good just for the sake of it. It's, he sent his son Jesus to pay the ultimate price for us. Spirit, soul, and body. And I wish I could stand here and say every person we've ever prayed for has been healed. But that'll be a lie. I wish I could also say every person we're going to pray for is be healed. I'd love that to be our testimony. But you know we're on a journey, yeah? This I do know. Every person who fights the good fight of faith Jesus will keep you to the end. See, the fight is a fight of faith, not necessarily to get the end result, which is the healing or the deliverance, whatever, whatever. Paul said, I've finished my race. I've fought my fight. I've kept the faith. What's he talking about? He's talking about there's assignments sent from the pit of hell to destroy your faith in God. Because if they get your faith, they've got everything that God wants you to have to connect with him. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. Without faith, we're left just with natural reason and intellect and earthly resources. How many know they can only carry you so far? But when we fight the fight of faith... And, and the story out of the, kind of the backstory behind the, the testimony of, of healing is that we cannot do it alone. Because yeah. <laughs> we all have blind spots. And we all have dark places in our hearts and minds that need to be called out. In love, in community, in fellowship, and say, look, if your trajectory here continues to go this way, you're going to miss the call of God on your life. You're going to miss what God's going to do in your life. And the ramifications could be eternal. So we need God. We need each other. We need God. We need each other. And sometimes it's okay to say, I don't know why that didn't work. I don't have all the answers. And guess what? Neither do you. (laughs) But we worship and love and then can relate with one who does have all the answers. But he never promises to tell us the solutions to all our problems this side of eternity. Never, once. In actual fact, it's Hebrews talks about by faith, We understand. See, some of us might be thinking, I've got to get to a place where I can understand intellectually with my mind. I've got to work it all out. Let me tell you, you're going to be waiting a long time. (laughs) Because God cannot be worked out. If he's truly God, he can never be worked out. He can never be confined into a little box. (laughs) He can never be put somewhere (laughs) where we can tame him or we can control him. 
or we can even fully understand him. So let me save you a lot of heartache and frustration. Stop trying to work God out. (laughs) Go to him with your heart. Go to him with an open-hearted approach and say, Holy Spirit, show me. Are we good? And I'm left with five minutes. <laughs> Joking. Let's close our eyes for a second. Holy Spirit, thank you that you're here. We cannot know the Father and the Son without you, Holy Spirit, breathing life into your word. We cannot attain to knowledge. Knowledge is revealed to us by you, Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, we invite you this morning to lead us into all truth. Veils to be removed. Blinkers to come off, Lord. Hardened hearts to be softened. Hurt hearts to be filled with oil. The oil of your presence so we can receive healing, so we can open up and run to you in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. amen, wonderful, wonderful. Why don't you just stretch just one hand out to me and one hand out to the person either on your left or right, depending on what hand you got out. And say, in your own words, thank you for your anointing on Jim's life to preach your word, his word. And Father, thank you for ears to hear what you are saying to me this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. We're going to dive straight into it. I'm not even going to go for a recap because it'll be very futile for me. I'll get stuck and I won't get to what we want to say. So we have been doing a series on Holy Spirit. This is part four. We started way before Easter and we've this, we had three installments. I've done a couple. Sally did one last time before Easter. Uh, and this is part four and God willing, we'll continue to just teach on Holy Spirit. How many know we all come from different backgrounds, we've had different understandings, different upbringings about who Holy Spirit is, what He does, um, different teachings. So I'm not here trying to convince you, I'm not here trying to force my opinion on you, I'm here just to present truth and now Him, the Holy Spirit, to lead you in this process of truth and to show you that maybe sometimes what we've believed hasn't been accurate or consistent with the scriptures, the whole counsel of the Word of God, and I encourage you to go back to the Word of God, like Paul said, the, the noble Bereans in Acts 17, that they studied diligently the scriptures to see what Paul was saying was true. We need people like that, not to correct everything the preacher says and ping pong all his faults and you didn't say this properly and your theology wasn't correct there. No, that's nauseating, but go back and say, Lord, what are you saying to me through the scriptures? Because if it's just my word you're taking and you're taking at face value, I fear for you because I can be deceived and I can mislead you astray. Why? Because I'm not Holy Spirit or Jesus or God and neither are you, but you need him to reveal scripture to you. Holy Spirit, his work is paramount in our lives. Without him, we wouldn't have creation. You know that? We wouldn't have creation the way we know it without Holy Spirit. He took the Word of God and He made it into substance. And He's still doing that today. He takes the Word of God and He makes it into substance in your heart. Can you say amen? Creation, Israel, the nation of Israel will exist it. The birth, the death, the resurrection of Jesus wouldn't have happened without Holy Spirit. He is the power of God. He is the anointing of God. If you study the Old Testament, 
without the anointing of, of the Holy Spirit upon kings or priests or prophets, they couldn't function in their God-given gift. It's what qualified them. The anointing, the power, the presence of Holy Spirit upon their lives. Good to see you, Carlos. Welcome, welcome. You got a hungry heart, brother. You know that? The all-powerful, all-knowing spirit of the living God. He's here this morning. Can I, we don't have to welcome him or invite him or activate him or commission him or release him. Now, I'm not trying to be silly. Remember, he is God. He tells us what to do. We don't tell him what to do. And go, go through the scriptures. Sometimes weirdness creeps into the church and we don't know it's weird because it's not Bible. Show me once where Jesus released or activated the Holy Spirit. Didn't happen. You know when the Holy Spirit gets released? When you preach the word. <laughs> when you worship the Father, Holy Spirit's been released. Not when you release Holy Spirit. Paul never once prayed or play a release of Holy Spirit. No, he's already here. Yeah. He's already come. Yeah. He's already in us and on us. We don't have to release him or activate him. We have to honor his presence. Yeah. We have to say, thank you, Lord, you're here. And all we're like boats on a harbor waiting to catch the wind. Yeah. That's what we are. Yeah. We're saying, Holy Spirit, what are you doing? Where are you moving? We put our sails up and we run with the Holy Spirit. Are we good? <laughs> if you look at the book of Acts, actually, there was a reverence for the Spirit of God. Paul said, I was going to go this way, but the Holy Spirit stopped me. <laughs> I'm going to go into Jerusalem, but Holy Spirit warns me, be, you're, going to be, you're going to suffer for Jesus. And he still wanted to go. A reverence for the presence of the Holy Spirit. And it's missing by and large in the modern church. We've made him into a power or feeling or goosebumps or something that moves. and It's just weird. It's weird. Let's be open to him. Worship Jesus. Holy Spirit falls upon you. I'm not having a go. I'm not saying we're weird, okay? Don't read into what I'm saying. I'm saying let's not be. Just take everything in. And we copy each other's behavior. So someone laughs, we laughed. Someone cries, we cry. And we mimic God. We mimic each other. Now, I don't know why I'm saying all this. I'm just trying to bring correction and balance. Not to quench the Spirit's fire. Paul said, do not quench the Spirit's fire. Test everything. So we are free in this house to experience Holy Spirit. <laughs> but I'm not going to tolerate stuff that's not biblical and just put up with it because we're free. I'm just being honest. <laughs> Are we good? Please smile or say something because. <laughs> the Spirit gives power for salvation. We've covered this. The Spirit gives power for sonship. It's by Him we require Abba Father. The Spirit gives power for sanctification. You cannot become holy without the power of the Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit gives us power for service. I think there's a slide somewhere. So salvation, sonship, sanctification, service. Holy Spirit does those things. Cannot be saved without Him. You cannot grow in your relationship without, without Him. 
You cannot grow in holiness without Him. He makes us more like Jesus. Who does? Holy Spirit. Jesus is the prototype. And then service. So this morning, I just want to cover just the last bit there about service. So he empowers us to be witnesses. Sally covered very well the, the topic about the Holy Spirit empowers us. And I just want to piggyback off that. Empowers us to be witnesses. Calls us into ministry. Who does? Holy Spirit. Anoints us for service. Who does? Holy Spirit. Who? Just the pastors? No, the whole body's anointed by Holy Spirit to do the works of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Empowers us to preach the good news. Who? Just the preachers? Every single person. He's empowered to preach the good news. And then he enables us in creativity, gifts, talents, and wisdom to do what? To serve the kingdom. He empowers us for service. Luke said it this way. Luke 24, 49, behold, quoting Jesus, I send you the promise of my Father. Turn to the person next to you and say, the promise of my Father. Very important, we understand that language. It's not talking about salvation. How many people think that's talking about salvation? No, it's not. It's absolutely not. In the context, Jesus is saying, wait, I'm gonna send you the promise of my Father. But you've got to wait, you've got to tarry in the city until you've been clothed or endured with power from on high. I'm not talking about salvation. He's talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit, which the Father has promised to all God's people so that we can all serve His purposes. Can you say amen? You know, without being anointed, you cannot serve the purposes of God. You are trying to serve Jesus in your own strength, if you're not anointed, filled with the Spirit. And the Old Testament says, not by might or by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. Amen. He empowers us for service. Acts 1 says the same thing. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them who? Jesus, not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Same language. Not salvation, promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, John the Baptist, but you shall be baptized with or in the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Talking about the promise of the Father. Talking about not doing any ministry. Talking about not serving the purposes, not preaching the gospel, not being a light and salt in our community without Holy Spirit coming upon us to anoint us for that task. He said, you shall receive power. Turn to the person next to you and say, you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, so you can speak in tongues. Is that what it says? It doesn't say that. Now, tongues is probably the, the most biblical uh, sign to being filled, to be honest with you. If you look at, study the book of Acts, which I spent 27 years studying the book of Acts. Probably the number one sign of being filled with the Spirit is speaking in other languages. Not me, Bible. But the purpose of being filled with the Spirit is not just so you can speak in tongues. And just to set us free, there's at least three different types of tongues in the New Testament. There's tongues for personal edification. It's upward between me and God. It doesn't need an interpretation. It's me and the Lord, upward. Next is this tongues as one of the gift of tongues in 1 Corinthians 12 in a public gathering where someone stands up and they give a tongue or an unknown language and either they or someone else in the, in the congregation gives an interpretation of that tongue. That's two already. The third one is in Acts chapter 2 when they're all assembled together and they're all speaking in tongues, 120 of, of them, loud noise, but they were speaking not in unknown languages, but known languages, unknown to them, but known to people around them. So they're speaking in tongues, but really they're speaking in all these different dialects, praising God. 
It's already just shown you three different types of tongues in the Bible. And only one of them needs to be interpreted. The one that's at the public gathering, that's one of the nine gifts of, of, of the Spirit, that we stand up and say, I've got a message of the Lord. Here it is. Can someone interpret it, please? Sanity. God's not a God of confusion. Paul says, I pray in the Spirit. I pray in my understanding. I sing in the Spirit. I sing in the understanding. He didn't say, I'll make sure someone interprets when I do that. No, it's between me and the Lord. I interrupted myself. The main purpose of being baptized in the Spirit is not to speak in tongues. It's to empower you to be a witness for Jesus. Let that sink in. If God thought I could do it on my own, he wouldn't have sent me the Holy Spirit. If God thought you could do it on your own, he wouldn't say, wait, but you better make sure you wait and receive before you open up your mouth to represent me. <laughs> Are we good? Bible. I love the Word of God, and I love the Spirit of God. Are we a word church or spirit church? Dumb question. Does the plane lift the left wing or the right wing? Which one's more important? Chicken wing. We need a chicken wing. Yeah. <laughs> if we're just in the Word, we're going to dry up, straight up honest. If we're just in the spirit, we're going to blow up. If we're in the word and the spirit, we're going to grow up. How many want to grow up? Just two of you. How many want to grow up for Jesus? <laughs> All right, let's keep moving on. Acts chapter 2. And then, so there was the promise of my father, promise of my father, Acts chapter 2. The promise came. No longer do I have to pray, Lord, send me the promise. The promise is already here. No more, Holy Spirit, can you come? The promise has already arrived. It's like you've ordered something from Amazon, and it's on your doorstep, and you ring up Amazon, and you speak to Jeff, and you say, hey, Mr. Bezos, can you send me that package? And you say, it's already sent. You've got to open it up. Holy Spirit's here. Hannah, Holy Spirit's all over you. So your heart has been closed by this. Not to embarrass you, give you hope. God wants to open up your heart. He wants to breathe on you. Bring his oil into your heart. Would you let him? Can you let him? Trust him. Holy Spirit came. Early church didn't know what was coming. <laughs> They're just waiting, praying. Ten days, 120 of them praying, nonstop, praying, praying. Suddenly, whew, manifestation. Notice Peter didn't get up and say, Shh, be quiet, you're too loud. Peter didn't come and say, can you be quiet back there? You're acting like drunk people. You're interrupting the Lord. Join the Holy Spirit's all over you. Can you lift your hands to heaven? Father, we pray fresh fire. Joanna, right now. Fresh fire. I'm reminded of a word. You were in your mother's womb. You were fire baby. The fire baby. 
Father, we thank you that the fire to come out through Joanna, Lord. In Jesus' name, to touch her generation with your fire. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, amen, amen. Peter didn't say, oh, you guys are freaking me out. I want to go back to fishing. <laughs> I also help us to see what they experienced was very unusual, not, like nothing that ever happened. But never once did they say, this is too weird for God, I'm checking out of here. God would never do that. Why would God do that? <laughs> never once you see it in Scripture, they ask those questions. They just let Holy Spirit do what He wanted to do. After all, He is God, isn't He? Yeah. Now, in fairness, He got up and brought a biblical perspective to what was happening. He brought an understanding through the Scriptures. Hey, these guys aren't drunk just showing off or being silly just to whatever reason. This is what Joel was talking about in the last days. God's going to pour out His Spirit on all flesh. Yeah. And there was sanity, and there was, okay, God's doing something. No, no I might not understand it, but God's doing it. And what's the proof? That day, 3,000 people got saved. So the proof isn't in what the manifestations are happening. The proof is how many lives are being changed. I don't know why I'm circling around like that. When the Holy Spirit moves, who got saved? Who got set free? Who got delivered? Who got empowered? Who got a prophetic word? They're the questions we need to ask. Not, I don't like, weird. Wrong question. Are we good? I'm trying to bring so much balance and sanity, one day you'll thank me for it. You might not get it yet, one day you'll thank me for it. Let's let Holy Spirit be God. Let's bring perspective where we need to. Let's bring understanding where it's needed. But let's not quench. Let's not squash. Let's not put our experience on someone else. Let's be open-handed and release Holy Spirit to do His thing. Amen. Amen. You guys are listening so beautifully. John, you're a great listener, mate. John, the Lord's raising you up. You know that. So the years of your life have been a preparation. The pain, the under misunderstandings. I just feel the Lord just, almost like, you know, a renderer will get something that's on the ground and slap it on the wall and smooth it and make this beautiful looking wall feature that's what the Lord's been doing for you just getting the junk that's been in your life and slapping it not slapping you slapping it <laughs> and it's making you know, I feel the Lord's going to release you just stuff in your life promises prophetic utterances that's going to come into fulfillment for you and this trip coming up very significant for you amen Amen. Amen. All right. We've got to move very quickly. Holy Spirit facts. One day I'll get through all my notes. <laughs> it, maybe not. No? Okay, anyway. Jesus started his ministry only after he was anointed. Very important. Jesus was perfect. He was God. He was man. Never preached once. 
never healed anyone, never did anything for the kingdom except honor and love the Father, which is obviously for the kingdom as well. But in terms of ministry, not one thing. It's very important for us to understand that. If Jesus needed to be anointed, what excuse do you have? <laughs> he was God, knew God, intimate with God, full of power, full of glory. But not one bit of ministry until the Holy Spirit came upon him. And there's the scriptures. Then Jesus being filled with Holy Spirit. Now, why would Luke use that language? Because there was a moment, you know, this, you don't take it the wrong way. Holy Spirit was always with Jesus, but not upon Jesus. Later on in Luke 4, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Very different to in me. Holy Spirit's in you for your benefit. He's on you for ministry to others. Holy Spirit filled Jesus. He returned to the Jordan and was led. The first thing the Spirit did to Jesus was led him into the wilderness. How many know Holy Spirit knew Jesus could handle it? How many know if Holy Spirit did that to us, we'd be running away because we couldn't handle it? Next, Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. So up until that point, Jesus had no power of the Holy Spirit upon him. But Jim, but he was God. He was God. And Philippians says he emptied himself of the right of being God until the Holy Spirit filled him, power came upon him. And next slide is the one I quoted. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's quoting Isaiah 61 because he has anointed me. Can you say amen? The anointing is very powerful. Only the anointing breaks the yoke over people's lives. Only the anointing sets the captive free. Only the power of the Holy Spirit can help enable you to preach the gospel. It's only the anointing of God that brings freedom. It's not just your words. Are we good? And then he says in Matthew 12, uh, 12 he's having a go at the Pharisees because they're attributing the, the miracles of Holy Spirit to demonic power. And Jesus got very defensive of the Holy Spirit. And he says, if I cast out demons by the finger of God, then surely the Spirit of God is among you. In other words, it's the Holy Spirit that brings freedom. It's the Holy Spirit that did miracles through Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit that turned water into wine. It's the Holy Spirit that took five loaves and two fish and multiplied it and made it 12 basketfuls of left over. Who? Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that enabled Jesus to walk on water. Everything that Jesus did was by the power of the Holy Spirit. Next. Time's up, is it, Carlos? Oh, good. Next slide. His power is often tangible. There's often some scriptures there reveal that the Holy Spirit is tangible. It makes it a little uncomfortable. Because sometimes maybe we've been taught the Holy Spirit is just the reveal of truth. It's just on the inside of you. Nothing much happens. And be careful of emotionalism. Watch out for those crazy charismatics and those pent-up Pentecostals because they're weird. Be careful of them. But Holy Spirit shows through the Scriptures that His presence is tangible. You know the story where Jesus was walking and the lady with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5 touched the hem of His garment. And Jesus said, I've something power left me. I feel power leave my body. Because the anointing can often be tangible. Now, the flip side of that is don't wait to feel something before you step out in the anointing. Because then we get tricked the other way. We get deceived. I've got to feel something. I've got to feel a manifestation before I pray. No, no. You pray, you speak, you preach, you lay hands on the sick, no matter what you feel. But sometimes 
There's evidence because the power of the anointing of the presence of God is tangible. I don't know how to make it any clearer to you. It's, it's okay to allow Holy Spirit to touch you tangibly. Can I just share a bit of my story? I got saved 23 years old. It was only a couple of years ago, actually. <laughs> if the moment we got saved, we were just all in for Jesus. I remember being in my room, alone, worshipping the Father. I was probably saved one or two weeks, honestly. Didn't know anything. In my room, the Holy Spirit filled me. Holy Spirit baptized me. The Holy Spirit anointed me. No one around, no one giving me speech hours, no one pushing me over, no one releasing stuff over me. It was just me and God. And for the first time, I said these words to Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Why? Because the Holy Spirit enables you to love Jesus, number one manifestation. Number two is in my room, I started feeling like electricity was pulsing through my body. I'm thinking, what the heck? It's like pins and needles, like I've just put my finger into a power socket because I've done that before and I know what it feels like. <laughs> That's what it felt like. And then out of my, my belly, remember, no one's around. I'm not coached into praying in tongues. There's no one there. This language just goes, just start praying in tongues. Wow. You know, my life was completely, completely changed after that day. I was already saved. I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. I went from being this shy, insecure person. Didn't want anything to do with life and ministry and, and God touched my heart. He anointed me. He called me. He set me apart for his purposes. How? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. My life has never been the same. I just encourage you. God's no respecter of persons. He touches us different, but he wants to touch us to show us that his power is real. Scripture we didn't get to in 1 Corinthians. Paul said, I'm going to preach about Jesus and his crucifixion so that you're, uh, and the Spirit's power and his presence so that your faith doesn't rest on man's wisdom but on the power of God. God wants our faith to rest on his power. Not in what I can do, but on his power. Are we good? Yes. Amen. Next, his power is organic and moving. How many of you have ever studied the emblems of the Holy Spirit? Anyone? The emblems of the Holy Spirit? How many of you have ever heard of the emblems of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, okay. You'd be very encouraged if you study. It's, it's basically the Holy Spirit is wind, is fire, is oil, is river. Clear teaching in the Bible about who Holy Spirit is. And the message that God wants to get to us is the Holy Spirit is organic and moving and cannot be tamed. There's a wildness to the Holy Spirit that God's communicating through the language, through the emblems of the Holy Spirit, that we cannot contain Him. We cannot box Him in. Come on, the last time you controlled the wind. Maybe the last few days, how many of you have tried controlling some water that's coming your way into your house? What about oil? You spill some oil, it gets everywhere very quick. What about some fire? Maybe you have to control fire. We have to be very careful with fire because it burns what? Out of control. And God's trying to get his message to us about the Holy Spirit is organic and moving. Now read something. We're going to be done. Jesus told his followers they'll be clothed with power from on high. That sounds noisy and disruptive. Would you agree? It sounds like something that would shake the world. Would you agree? Wherever the Spirit goes, He changes people into radicals for Jesus. <laughs> That's what He does. He loves to do that. He takes our ordinary lives and makes them extraordinary for Him. 
He gives us power to preach boldly, heal the sick, even raise the dead. All those who believe are to ask and expect God to fill them with his spirit to be empowered for mission to serve him. It is this supernatural power that Jesus uses upon us to fulfill his mission to the world through the church. Can you say amen? Now, the early church disciples would only hear the sound, would not only hear the sound of the wind and see the flames of fire coming on people, but they were infused with these untamable qualities of supernatural strength, fierce courage, uncanny boldness, and unusual ability to see into the invisible realm of the kingdom. How? Through Holy Spirit. He took these Ordinary people made him into world changers. Can you say amen? Now, I'm not suggesting, as I've said, that he brings disorder or chaos. God is not the author of confusion. But too often, now listen to this very carefully. Too often, the Western church has tried to confine the Holy Spirit, to muzzle him, to constrain him, or to shoot him with a tranquilizer gun so that we can maintain control. The issue is always control. If you relinquish the right to be in control of your life, Holy Spirit will fill you. If you're holding on to control, you won't, won't be filled with Holy Spirit. I fear that some of us, in some cases, have begged the Spirit of God to stay away from us so that we can play our tame version of church without unexpected interruptions. If we are honest, we can admit sometimes church has become so weak, timid, compromised with the world that we don't even remotely resemble the powerful Christians in the first century who bravely preached the gospel, worked miracles, and even gave their lives as martyrs to serve Jesus. Yet the promise for us still remains. Any Christian daring enough to invite the Spirit to empower them can experience all the manifestations of His power that operate in the early church. Can you say amen? The book of Acts, last statement and my computer's closing, is the story of the early disciples receiving what Jesus received in order to do what Jesus did. If we don't want to do what Jesus did, can I save you a lot of heart, <laughs> heartache and frustration? Don't ask for the Holy Spirit to fill you. He's only interested in people to do what Jesus did. We are, after all, Christians. We have been, after all, sent as ambassadors to represent him, to be witnesses. Can you say amen? amen. So if, and I love the way Holy Spirit organized this commission in the beginning of the service and, and now, at the end, if you've said yes to Jesus, that you want to represent him as his ambassador on the planet, can I suggest before you leave this place, today that you be filled with power from on high because you cannot do it you cannot do it you, can't, you cannot save heal restore only Holy Spirit can so no music If you want to be filled with Holy Spirit, maybe you've never been filled, you've never been baptized. Tim, how do I know I've been baptized? You will know. Power comes upon you. I'm going to ask you to stand. 
if you want to be filled. Not everyone, if you want to be filled. I mean, I wish everyone could stand, but I'm not making you all stand. You know what I mean, yeah? It's not in our loudness the Holy Spirit comes. And can be honest, it's not even in our quietness. It's in a heart that wants Him. I'm going to pray. As I pray, the Holy Spirit's going to begin to touch you. He's going to pour Himself out on you. He's going to fill you. He's going to anoint you afresh. He's going to baptize you with oil and water and wind and fire because he loves to do those things. Father, we thank you for your promise. Your promise was to give us the gift of Holy Spirit. And Jesus, you said for us to wait until we've been clothed with power from on high. So Lord, as your people, we wait, we ask, we believe, we receive your Holy Spirit's power upon each and every heart this morning. In the name of Jesus. Come and touch, Holy Spirit. Come and touch, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Fill us with your love, Lord. Pour out the love, the Father, in our hearts, Lord. Baptize us, Lord. Baptize us, Lord. Baptize us, Lord. that out of our bellies will flow rivers of living water, Lord. Rivers, Lord. <laughs> and breathe upon us, Holy Spirit. witnesses for your glory Lord come upon us with boldness and confidence let's put our faith in your power in our lives Lord not what we feel what we know who we know it's Jesus and him glorified well, I pray this week there'll be opportunities for us to step out in boldness to demonstrate to our families, to our community, that Jesus is alive, Lord. Empower us for witnessing, Lord. Empower us to live for you. Empower us to speak your word.
empower us to believe you fresh, Lord. Thank you that you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind, Lord. We choose to partner with you, Holy Spirit, to reveal Jesus to the world around us. Amen. Amen. You want to keep receiving and ask Lucas just to play some music in the background and make your way to the front. We can continue to pray for you or continue to receive. The rest of us, God bless you. Thank you for listening. We've got some tea and coffee and snacks. And discipleship training starting at 1 p.m. God bless you. Encounter night this Friday. See you all then.